Welcome to another episode of The Pursuit of Coconuts. My name is Poland, and thank you for joining us. I've dedicated my life to fighting the corruption, the food insecurities, and blessing the agricultural community here in the Philippines by establishing a global social enterprise. In this episode, we have established our first pond and the first planters to our aquaponic farm. We needed to get this one up and running before we fully build out the farm just to make sure we have things dialed in and that things are working properly. The two horsepower pump is perfect. It puts enough pressure to hit these five beds with a more than enough water going through. So that's the pressure relief that we created there. So there's gonna be plenty of oxygen, plenty of water flow. This one has three planters connected. That one has two. And check this out. So we've got this on top just to filter some stuff out. We're gonna mount this and make sure it fits pro properly. We've got the homemade French drains with thousands of cuts because and then we've got this bad boy here. I took the two inch drain out so it can go in and there's no burping. And this is actually covering the pipe and you can see that there's no burping in there. Plumbing looks real good. We brought these covers just because there's a lot of frogs over here, so. Now all we need to do next is add the rocks, add the ammonia, add some water, mix it all together and create some healthy bacteria that will create the nitrogen cycle in our aquaponic system. Now Aaron gave us a great tip. He's our aquaponics specialist and he says that some of the plumbing may get brittle over time because of the sunlight and the deterioration. So he suggested that we paint any of our plumbing that is exposed to the sunlight. So on our drains we bought some gray paint to match the rocks in the concrete and we started painting some areas that would be exposed. Thank you for the tip ahead of time instead of waiting a year or two down the line and our plumbing starts to crack. So this is a tip for you guys. If you have anything that is exposed and can't last in the sun, make sure you properly cover it with something so that way it protects your investment. Aquaponic Systems is a great way to save water, anywhere from 70 to 90% on water savings, but there still is water loss because the plants soak some of it up. There's a little bit of evaporation. And so the smart thing to do is to have a tank where you can either pre-treat the water if your local water has chlorine because you don't want to add a bunch of water at once with chlorine in it and it might kill some of the good bacteria that's in your water. That way we can either pre-treat the water, capture some rainwater, or figure out the water system due to the water loss that the aquaponic system does have. Again, we save so much water, but you still need water to grow these plants. You can kind of see the water turning green and that's the algae that would grow because of sunlight and the nutrients you can see bugs coming into the water. So that's what you don't want too much of in here right now because once we start getting fish, the fish will at least eat the bugs. Uh, but you also don't want the algae to grow because algae is competing for nutrients with the plants. So this is perfect time to add the rocks so that way it's shaded and the rocks will then cover the water and it'll always cover the water. So this will be less evaporation, saving on water, and two, it won't allow photosynthesis for the algae to grow. So that way the algae as a plant isn't taking nutrients from the water. Okay, so we're trying to work with the local rocks that we can find. So we ordered rocks that we usually use for mixing in concrete to build roads and buildings. And we separated the larger rocks with the smaller rocks. Now this was labor intensive. Depending on what you get, they did not have pea gravel here. So we had to separate the larger rock to try to get about a quarter inch rocks for the top layer. Now the bottom layer of our planters can have big rocks so the water can flow. But on the top layer, it is easier to handle plants, to dig, and for roots to grow when there's smaller rocks. So we had to separate the rocks and this, like I said, took days, if not weeks. So after sorting the rocks, we wanted to make sure that didn't carry a lot of dirt and things that can just get the water cloudy. So we actually pressure washed the rocks. Like I said, this is super labor intensive. The blessing is that they are hard workers here and didn't mind so long as we got the job done, they kept at it. And so we were literally at close to 35 to 40 sacks of rocks on each pond. And that's just the small ones, not including the large ones. So we're probably close to 60 sacks of just rocks for each one of the planters. We are finally putting some of this gravel that they cleaned and hand washed and separated by hand. We had to buy big, two big meters of this uh, by the truckload and we bought about 14, so about two truckloads 
of rocks, but then these don't come in this size. They come in a bigger size, so we have to filter out the smaller size just to throw in here because the options are just um, half inch and two inch. And so we have to buy the half inch, filter out the smaller rocks out so we can be able to use by pond. Yeah, so this is actually a lot, a lot of work. We'll get this filled. This is what the plants grow into and the, the roots grow into. So we'll just keep on trekking until we fill it up. I can't even predict. Our planters are about 13 to 14 inches deep, but we wanted the top of the water to be at about 12 inches. So our drains are leveled at about that height. And so once it gets to that height, it starts to drain so it doesn't overflow out of the planters. We're also able to remove them and get them drained out even lower. It's just wherever that pipe sits in height, that's where the water also will sit. Those who are experienced in aquaponics might be asking, where are the bell siphons? We are not using bell siphons. And for the reason of malfunctions or things getting clogged or a frog jumping in and tipping the bell siphon the wrong way or getting clogged in there and then overflowing the system, we decided to go with an ebb and flow system. So we actually have holes drilled for draining and the water pressure coming in is strong enough where the water flows and fills the planters up in about an hour and it drains in about an hour. So we actually had to test and measure and time the system to make sure that the holes were either large enough. If the hole was too big, it would drain too fast and we wouldn't have enough time for the water to get cleaned up by the bacteria. If it drains too slow, then it can kill some of the worms and flood the roots. So we had to make sure the timing is perfect. And so we have this on about a one hour fill and a one hour drain time. As much as we wanted to use local items, the pool timer is one thing that I just banged my head against the wall. I looked on websites, looked on Facebook, and looked on everything, and these pool timers were just the simplest things to use, and they were from the U.S. I had to order a bunch of them off of Amazon and have them ship in a Balak Bayan box, and it took about three months to get here. Good thing we thought ahead of time, and we got these shipped over, and these were just recommended from Aaron, once again, our aquaponics specialist. With the focus on the aquaponic farm, we wanted to be committed to making sure this place was beautiful so it can inspire a new generation of young farmers. So my wife is a wonderful and talented designer and she is here to make sure that everything that she touches on the farm turns into something that is just dreamy. You're starting to see like more potential of the different parts of the land. I'm looking at this area right here and I'm like, we can plant more trees here. That kind of helped stabilize the roads a bit and bring in more life and shade and I want them to be fruit bearing trees. So definitely like the uh, stages of where it's going because you're just more and more, you see the potential. This is our first time flooding the system and seeing how everything is sealed. And it was heartbreaking to see that the planters were leaking and there was hairline cracks that you couldn't even see even after we waterproofed it. So we let it sit and we saw a bunch of water seeping through the sides. What we end up realizing after a few days of doing this is that the cracks started to seal automatically and as a part of the content inside the concrete and that the water would flow through and those little minerals would then get deposited in those cracks and those cracks started to seal. So as much as I was concerned about it being sealed a thousand percent, it was actually okay and over time these cracks self-healed. So as we started laying the rocks in the planters we wanted to make sure that the french drains did not move and also we wanted to make sure that the big rocks and these are about one to one and a half inch rocks on the bottom are filled to about three to four inches and then the rest of that on top would be filled with about the quarter inch rocks on top and gravel so i wish that they had pea gravel here but again massive intensive work everything's pretty much carried and done by hand not even wheelbarrows this is the full workout guys so if you guys want to get in shape hit me up and i will hire you and in a month you will be transformed now why are the rocks so important well there's multiple reasons the rocks are going to be the median in which the roots hold on to and grow in also they will be holding the good microorganisms and bacteria and so we have to have a good system that we also can handle and also we wanted to make sure that the rocks weren't filled with contaminants or lime or anything like that that can change your system up so we had to find something local that was abundant 
easy to transport, cost effective. And this is what we started off with at first. And later on, we're going to have to change some things up. We did our best to calculate everything, measure everything, and measure it twice before we did and purchase things but still in real life after things settled after we separated things the calculations definitely weren't exact and we had to continue to adjust and that's a part of farming we have our theories we have our usual that we try to get used to and then we just have to adapt with what is the actual so it's a lesson it's a good lesson in life to be adaptable have goals set them go after them and if things change it is just oh Okay. See you on the next episode as we successfully cycle our first aquaponic system.